So here at SAFE, we've been working with FME 2018. We've been working on it for about a year now. And uh, we're really excited to show um, show it to everybody. Yeah, and we've got a lot of things to show today. Yeah. So we're going to yeah. do something quite different. So we have a slide deck that will be distributed after the webinar. But what we're going to do during the webinar is we're just going to show like a few, like three slides to start to set the, the sort of the, the tone. And then we're going to go and just demo everything that's in the slide deck. Yep. And then we have three slides at the end. And the idea is you'll be able to see everything that's in the slide deck as a demo. And then you, when you get the slide deck, you'll have a nice uh, reminder of all the things that we've shown. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, so our agenda today is we're going to give you a guided tour of FME Server 2018. Um, we're going to build an automation um, and we're going to highlight key functionality as we go. Yep. So if you've never used FME Server 2018, you're going to leave with an idea of what FME Server is all about um, and how it can help you in your organization. If you've been using FME Server for, for a while, you're going to be able to see some of the new things we've added to FME Server. Yeah. So. Something for everybody. Yeah, which should be good. So, mm -hmm. automate anything, yeah. which is the point of FME Server, It right? really is, yeah. yeah. So, so, so you guys, um, there, was, there was a great webinar yesterday on desktop where you showed how to author, how to run workbench scripts, either on a, uh, on a, you know, on a single machine. And so now with FME Server, we're gonna show how you can take those uh, workspaces and make them available to anybody who has access to a browser as well as how you can use FME Server to create automation things that will run a workspace based on some other activity. Could be a schedule, yep. could be email arrive, could yep. be many folder things. In a uh, folder in Dropbox, a folder in your, yeah. fo no, file in your folders. Yeah, yeah that's anything. it, that's it, yeah. Yeah. So. so when you get FME Server, what does it look like? Yeah, so now we're gonna branch off to this is live, so we're now off yeah. our slide decks. Yeah, so this yeah. is when you get FME Server and you install it, or um, you know, you somebody says, "Hey, here's FME Server. Please log in." You're going to see this screen, and um, the first time you log into FME Server and install it, you're going to want to know what can I do with FME Server. So yeah, in 2018, we've made that really easy. So yep. what do we have here, Jen? So you can see at the bottom below the login page, we've got a few options. Yep. So the Knowledge Center. Um, training. So for a while now, we've had we tried to put out as many articles and sort of a Q and A forum with information about FME Server. And if people get stuck, they can ask get help. Um, training as well. We've got all our training materials on there. You can sign up for live instructor led training, or you can watch recorded ones. And then something that's pretty recent to FME Server is this quick start. So if you don't have time to spend a few hours going through the training course, you just want to like get in there and see what FME Server can do quickly mm -hmm. you can use the quick start yeah. so should we yeah let's it? do that let's yeah. just uh, see what happens yeah and this just gives a great overview of all the things you can do with fme server so it talks about the basics you know the web interface yeah um, and then shows how you can just run a job because one of the easiest things and we're going to show that today is you yeah. publish something to server and people can just run it anybody can run it you don't yeah. have to have any anything installed on your machine also, um, below that are some of the automations that you can do with FME, like schedule a job. That's an obvious one. Yeah. You might have a job you want to run every night, every quarter, every month, every day, whatever. Yeah. And uh, so you can do that. And then we have some of these other things like, um, you know, like create a data download service. Yeah. 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 Monitor a directory. And what's that? What's that one about? So you can get FME Server to watch a folder. So FME mm -hmm. Server has resources. So yeah. whenever you want to run these workspaces, they might need the data. Mm -hmm. You have to put that in the resources. Sure. Or you can monitor like network resources if you've mm -hmm. got UNC paths to places. Mm -hmm. So every time a new file or folder appears in there, you can get FME Server to do something. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. Yeah, and you can just see some of the other automations you can do. Like um, receive an email. So when yep. an email arrives, you can have FME Server monitor you know, an email address and yeah. then grab the attachment and run it or, you know, yeah, trigger yeah. a workspace, you know, lots of different things through a, through a topic. You could have any, we have these REST endpoints and so you could have any web application that can post to a, a URL, trigger that. Yeah. And so, yeah. So. Yeah, so we've tried to put the most popular things that people do with FME Server on here. Yeah. So hopefully they're new people. <clears throat> yeah have an easy way to yeah, get started. Yeah. And at the end of each one of these these mini tutorials is 
a link to much more in-depth information, right? Yeah. 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 So, great. Yeah. So there we go. So that's that's very exciting for so, people helping yeah. people get started. But we know how to use FME Server already. I hope. We hope. Yes. Yes. Otherwise, this webinar might be a bit. That's right. Awkward. Okay, Jen. So let's. Yeah. Um, why don't we? Um, so why don't we log in? Yeah. Okay. So username is Jen, and then oh. Do you, did you set my password up for me? Do you know what my password is? I don't is? know. Did you forget? I, yeah. Okay. So That's... luckily in FME 2018, we have this nice forgot your password. Oh, phew. <laughs> that would have been really embarrassing. Yeah. So yeah, so just click on oh, that. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. So and then all you, and hopefully you remember your username. It's, yeah, this one's pretty easy to remember. Okay. So yeah. then you just say reset password. Reset my password. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get an email now. That's going to give you a link, I think. To reset my password. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. So. So, here's my inbox I prepared earlier, and oh, it looks look like that. got a new email. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you click on that link. Yeah. Uh huh. Now and I put now my you new can password enter in. Your new password. So there we go. And I'll remember so, this one. Yeah. Yeah. So this is great. In the past, when you forgot your password, um, you had to talk to your administrator, and that's really embarrassing. Jen would go see the administrator several times a week I think <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah so there you go so really nice and easy um, the big thing there is the administrator when they set up a, a user account of, of course they need to um, make sure that they actually um, set a user password yeah and also set up the um, the system configuration on uh, on how to do that so yeah yeah so we should so let's log in now yeah. as the administrator yeah, there you as go. As administrator, I've just logged in as me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's something. So, so yeah, as the Jen just logged in now, just, just as author. Yeah. And so you can see she doesn't have any ability to show how we um, would configure that. That's right. Yes. So you're going to have to log out again okay. and log back in. Yeah. Let's hope I can remember my other password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'll demo that twice. Yeah. I have a funny feeling it's probably the same. I'm going to go out and live. Well, that wouldn't be very secure. No, no, no. That's true. But it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I'll just close right. that for now. Yep. And yeah. And then under, yeah, features. Yep. So and so the then you can password. see the reset password there. And if she expands this, you'll see we've set up a Google account to be the one that actually sends and is the one that sends out the email messages. Yep. So then, if you look at your um, your user account under under um, security. You'll see that um, you know Jen has been really great about you know setting up her email addresses there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. With those two things, now everybody can uh, recover their own passwords. So yeah, yeah, awesome. So that's that's a new thing. Yeah. Okay. So now you might as well log in. With it. are you happy with the account you're logged in? Yeah. Why okay. not? Yeah. Okay. okay. That's pretty bright on the eyes, Jen. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe it, I stayed up way too late last night watching the Olympics, but uh, that looks really bright. Right? Can you please turn that down or something? Yeah. So in FME Server 2018, we now have dark mode. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So if you ever um, are in the web interface, you can click on your user settings in the top right, and then you've got this enable dark mode button. Nice. So if I press that, ta-da. Nice. I might stick with dark mode. Yeah, we should you know? do that. Yeah. Well, I do have a, uh, you know, a stormtrooper on my car, so maybe the dark mode is really, you know. And anybody who knows me knows I'm pretty dark. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So that's exciting. A small thing, but um, you know, when you are working late at night or your eyes are getting tired, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it's a good thing to have. So yeah. So why don't we now publish something? to FME Server and get started and show how FME Server can help FME users. Yeah, so if I open up Workbench. Yeah. So hopefully for anyone that was in the webinar yesterday, this workspace looks familiar. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So what is this workspace doing? Do you It's remember? a very simple one. Uh, as if people know, I have like a 10 transformer rule. So here I'm well under, we're well under that. Yeah. This is a very simple workspace it's sim that reads a PDF that has spatial data in it with attributes and we go out to shape yeah yeah should be xml but it's uh, shape yeah i know, I know. 
So, so we want to publish this yeah. to FME Because you think this is the greatest workspace ever. Of course. And you want to publish it and share it across your organization. So then anybody who gets a uh, PDF of this type, yeah. we want them just to be able to drag and drop it so that they can do this conversion. Because in the past, they've been sending them to you via email and you have other things to do. And yeah. You don't want to... Um, you know, continually just be a workspace runner. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. to publish that workspace to every server, you've got an option on the toolbar. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to run through this wizard. Yep. Um, I already have the web connection saved, which is pretty handy. Yeah, that is that is handy. Um, oh, you're creating a new one. Yeah. Pretty just so cool. I remember where it is. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So. Happy with yeah. the name of that? Yeah, we don't need any files. We're going to want to specify both data download and job submitter. Look yep. at that. Happy with that? I'm happy. Let's publish. Great. So now let's go to FME Server and show how to run that. Yeah. So if I go back to the home page mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I published that as my author account. No, uh, yeah, my author account, exactly. not my admin account. Exactly. So, so now in FME, so yeah, so this is this is really useful. So go to the repositories there. Yeah. And you're going to see that you don't, the webinar one, oh, it is there. It must have been there before. Oh, you're a super user now. That's why you see it. Yes. Yes. And I was looking on the home page. It tells you your last published workspaces. Yes. But technically, I didn't that's just right. publish that. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But one thing in FME Server, so Jen, yeah, so you can run it from here if you want, or you can use your other account, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, now in FME Server, we, if an author creates a repository, no other author sees that repository. Yeah. Unless. It's explicitly shared, so we've gone to a yeah. sharing model like that. Because in the past, you know, um, there was sharing default sharing in FME Server was much uh, more generous, and now so what we've done is we've really um, we've really locked it down. Yeah. yeah. So okay. yeah, back at the repository level, you've got that share with others. Yeah. On the right. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'm going to run this workspace now. Okay. So just using that run workspace at the top left mm -hmm. and find my webinar folder. Mm-hmm. Demo. Do we want this data download? Yeah, let's do data download. Okay, so, so this is not correct, this no. file path. So no. have you uploaded the data before this webinar in preparation? No. Oh, thanks. So you have it on your desktop though, right? I do, Awesome. Yes. So, so just drag and drop it on there. Okay, so let me... And we'll... People should watch this closely because... Um, okay. Let me make this bigger. Yeah. Find my finder. Okay. Right. So, so if we want to upload this US. Yeah, she can just drag one. it onto the canvas and you'll see where it says drag here, files here to upload. So she simply lets go. Yep. And that's all there is to it. That was really easy. Yeah. And a directory would work in Chrome too. So if you, let's say you had a shape file of direct, a, you know, a, a, a shape files in a directory. Yep. You could just drag it, the whole folder on there. Oh, okay. Right. That's good. And so now that she's done that, she can just click run. Yep. And let's hope this any works. Luck, dun, 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 it dun. should run. Yep. And because it's a data download service, now the person within the organization simply clicks on the link. And there you have it. You have a nice workflow where anybody within an organization can run this workspace. They don't even know what a workspace is. They just know how to get here. They click and run it. And um, away, they, uh, away they go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exciting. So let's um so that's um you know just so I'm showing you some things of the new interface. Um click on the hamburger just so people see that. And yeah, that's that thing up to the top left. Yeah. And you'll see we've really gone out of our way to make sure things disappear yeah. and reappear to give you maximum use of the main area. Yeah. yeah. Which will be more important in a few minutes. Okay, let's let's look at um let's go back to the publishing. Um, so you want me to go back to what? Yeah, and let's make a change. Okay. And we'll see if anybody noticed anything. So add, let's add a generalizer in there. Okay. Because one of the other things that um, we've added to FME, sure, that's great. Yeah. 
is version control. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we've, we've done the version control such that it's useful to desktop users who aren't actually going to run on server or um, people who are running on server. So let's assume for just the sake of an argument that you're an organization, you've installed server, but you actually never bought it because what we sell on server is engines. And so it's totally fine as from a safe perspective, if you install server, but you never get engines, and then you just use all the other stuff that server can provide, because it can provide a single place for all your repositories, it can provide a nice sharing mechanism. As far as backups go, you could use it for backups. Um, you can back up the directories, or you could use the server backups. Yeah. And then, um, and now we have version control. So let's publish this to the server before, and we will highlight um, again. Yep. We'll highlight that part. Yeah. So, it's same so yeah, same one. But um, you'll notice now there is this commit button. Yep. Yeah. So let's click on that and let's add to version history. Yeah. And so you can imagine you're working on desktop, you're working on your workspace, you get it the way you like it, and now you want to actually version it so you don't um, you don't lose it. So workspace, you should put a date on that, Jen. That would be what best. is the date today? Today is the twentieth. No, it's the 22nd. Second. Holy smokes, look at that. I lost two days already. <laughs> Skip over here Soon on the right gonna day. Soon it's going to be March, and then I'm totally going to be lost. Yeah. 22nd of February, 2018. I know yeah. the year. Oh, okay. so good. Yeah, yeah, which is important when you write checks. So, um, yeah. So, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and just carry on through again. Yeah, just carry on through again. I'll replace, replace it. Yeah. Yeah, Gosh. there we go. So that experience is totally the same. But now, of course, when you go back to the um, the server, <clears throat> you will yep. see, and you click on the um, go back to the repository, yeah, and it was webinar, yeah. You'll see there's this history thing, so you can click on that and then click on history, and then you'll see there's Hey, there's two versions there, right? Yep. There was one on you did on February 20th. Yeah. And then one you did on February 22nd. So there you go. And yeah. Um, yeah. And if you want to download those, let's say you needed to to go back to the one on February 20th. Yeah. You would click on that, and it would download it to your desktop. Yeah. We made that deci decision for if you're only working on desktop, you're happy with that. But we made that. But if you're working on server, we didn't want to just put it right into the production one, yeah. the one that's running because you may not want to do that. So, and if something's running and working, the last thing you may want to do is, oh, I'm going to grab a previous version and just throw it in. So you'd have to download the desktop and then republish, but uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's look at how we actually um, set that up. Set that up, yeah. So you need to be logged in again as administrator, but you yep. already are. I am, yep. yep. So you go to system configuration features, and under version control, you just, can, you just turn that on, yeah. So even if you just if you turn that on and do not fill out the um, the GitHub stuff underneath, it'll still version, but it's only going to be on the server. Okay. Yeah, and it just lives on that server. If you want to actually, but we recommend that you hook Git or in this case we've hooked hooked GitHub onto the back end. Yeah. And then the admin only the administrator can set up a turn version control on or B, specify where the server is going to be backed up to. Right? Okay, yeah. And then the administrator is the only one who can also decide when to push to the remote. So yeah. let's do that now just for, okay. just for kick. So what that will do is that will push everything to, um, in this case, it's going to push it to a GitHub repository. Yeah, right there. so yeah. we should see now the workspace I just published and yeah. we committed. That's right. We should see this in your GitHub, GitHub folder. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And we also made the decision um, when you do a migration where we don't store all the versions as part of the migration. What we what you need to do is first push to remote, back up the server, then restore the server, and then you can fetch from the remote if you want to get everything back to the way back to the way it was. And the reason for that is we want we you know we don't want to be storing things in our backups that are you know already in GitHub. So. So that yeah. was the that was the thinking there. So you'll want to remember that. So now, if if we back this server up and then created a new server, and we wanted to get all the version stuff set up properly, we would simply set up our version control and then say fetch from remote, 
and then it would our server would be back to the way it was before we yeah uh, like we're on our old one yeah. okay yeah so, yeah so that's um yeah so so yeah oh yeah we should show so, so if you go to the repositories again we can also do the commit um from the um the server interface as well okay so if, you so go if in i there, if you, go in, to go in? you got to go in there yeah and then you would click on that one the history and then you would say no you click oh. on the thing and then you just click the commit button again yeah. oh, right, you just yeah. say play commit and it looks a lot like the uh the desktop one yeah. and the feel and, and the reason there there is is when you're working with server you tend to publish edit publish edit publish yeah. edit oh sorry publish edit test publish edit test publish edit test oh it works yeah okay i want to commit that one yeah you don't want to commit every single time you you publish because it might not work yes um and um so once but once you got something working then you say hey that's the one i want to commit and um and away you go and um, if you're just working on the desktop you can also commit it on the desktop so yeah so we think we've uh, covered that but again please tr give this a try and let us know what you would like to see in the future yeah. what you like what you don't like things yeah. like that yeah. i think there is a um on the knowledge center there is a page talking about version control so that yeah. might be a really good place for feedback if people have yeah. that to put it there so yeah awesome yeah so jen what's next let's log off as the admin for now all right it makes okay. me nervous okay i'm afraid you know Afraid I messed it, mess it up. Well, I, I'm more scared of what I might do, honestly. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's good also to show folks that um, they they won't see the full extent. Like if you click on the repositories now, you're going to see there's a lot fewer there. Yeah. Because I didn't share my repositories with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For good reason. But <laughs> so, so now let's look at. Um, What's this workspace viewer thing we've added? So, so I want to see like this workspace that you're running. Um, yeah. Do you yeah. want to see it? Yeah. Okay. Can you download it or can you just show me what it looks like? I can show you okay. in the web UI. Oh, okay. So I'm going to open that workspace and find it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Look at that. So now you can, um, you can see workspaces in Workbench. So can you click on the generalizer? Yeah. Can you change that tolerance for me? No. Oh, maybe one day. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and sh there, there's also a different way to show, to show them. Can you just do it through the repository view? Yeah, yeah, so where we were before, if you're looking at a workspace, you might see the binoculars yeah. by the side of it, and then yeah. you can just click there and it will open it. Yeah, nice, nice, yeah. nice. And, um, yeah, and so any of the, you can inspect parameters on many of them, you can, anyway. So yeah. this is a work in progress, obviously. Yeah. Um, for 2018.0, it is view only, but still it's amazing, you know, how how often you use this once you, yeah. once you remember it's there. Because I know you on one of our machines had a workspace that was not happy. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder what he's up to in this workspace. You yeah. could just go and have a look yeah. and yeah. see. Yeah, way less friction, yeah. you don't have to get, you know, desktop, download. Relook. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, this is only um, turned on for authors. So if you're not an FME author, you would, if you're just a regular user, you might be able to run workspaces, but you wouldn't be able to view them. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. So now let's do, let's build a really simple schedule just to give okay. folks an idea yeah. of, um, you know, so that's this is probably the most popular automation that people do on FME server. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's amazing um, how many schedules um, some have actually created. It's 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 quite amazing. So yeah. Oops. That's okay. I was happy with the first spelling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't click. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So when do you want this to start? And um, let's run it immediately. Okay. And then say, yeah, so let's run it immediately. And then we can say every, let's run it every minute. Just for okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Minute. Schedule does not ex expire. Webinar. Yep. And again, we have those binoculars <laughs> all over the place. Yep. Okay. Oh, we need to, um, we need our source. Yeah, we need so data. have we uploaded data yet? We have uploaded data. Okay. So let's set our source 
Um, here, we're obviously, we're not going to drag and drop data. We're going to navigate to our... Um, or did we? I don't know. We maybe, did it as a temporary upload. Maybe we didn't. Let's have a look. So, so well, let's I can yeah. see it. Okay. Unless, yeah. Oh, you must have already done this. I did it like on the 19th. So there we go. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. add that one in. Okay. Get rid of that one. Okay. And then our output. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's already there, but we'll just overwrite it. No yep. worries. And so now we would click OK. And now every night we would run this workspace or every every, every day, every minute. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. every minute, we're a little paranoid here, <laughs> but every minute we would run this um, this workspace. And so anytime this source data file was um, changed, it, it, we would make sure we had, yeah. we'd always have the latest thing. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So how are we going to know that this has run? Well, we can look in the jobs. Let's look there. Okay. Let's click on jobs. Yeah. So hopefully that's completed. Yeah. Yeah. And look at that. Yeah. And it was successful. So those are all the jobs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now let's go back on as administrator. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And let's see what's going on in the server. So so each user, because this will really help us. Uh, what we've done is we've made it easy for you people to find... Um, you know what's going wrong on a server so let's click on jobs here and complete it and you'll be able to see oh looks good so so this is all users so um so let's just pick on jen again we could just Aww. see jen and um yeah and there she is and yeah okay it's run twice successful yep. um if we wanted to see the entire um server we just click um, all users again and then we can see all jobs, or we can see just failed jobs if we wanted to. Under status, we can see the failed jobs. And, Ooh. and there are some that are randomly failing. Ooh. So we'd want to look at that. And again, we could click on the log, just click on it to see the log file. Um, yeah, and then we could scroll down and we would see that um, Basically, oh, it's having trouble opening a file. So oh. clearly, every once in a while, there must be a, um, you know, a job that can't find the file. So let's yep. open that workspace. Let's just do okay. that for ticks. Um, so, um, so you want to find the binoculars? Yeah. So go back to jobs, and I think we'll have to go to the random fail guy. Yeah. Yeah. Can we click on that workspace? Uh, probably not. No. So go to um, repositories. Do you remember and, why you're keeping it? Oh, of course I do. Um, it's going to be under deep dive and okay. random fail. So you can click yep. on the binoculars there. And there's and you can imagine now you're inspecting what's going on. Yeah. And um, in this case, you're going to uh, – oh, that's interesting. Do, 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 refresh. Have you put more than 10 transformers in no, here? No, this is uh, – this is this always this never fails. There you go. There we go. So I'm not sure why it took so long, but hey. So, so you can see this is really a dumb trend. This is built to fail. So if you click on my tester, you'll see basically I generate a random number from 1 to 1,000. Oh, click on the random number generator, sorry. Um, yeah, and I build a number from 0 to 1,000, and then if the number is 1, I fail. Oh, so, all right, anyway. okay. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. but it gives you the idea how easy it was to figure out, oh, okay, this workspace is having issues. Here I can do a quick inspection. Yep. or download it yeah so that's um yeah that's good so that was um yeah so we made the job management easier for people so now they can um find out where where things have have failed yeah yeah good so users are buying um what typically happens in an organization is um organizations find their servers get busy so then they um they you know they would get more engines yeah um, and sometimes they get into it gets tricky when they want to share a server across different departments. Yeah, they might find that one department's a real heavy user, and so then the other departments have trouble. Yeah, you know, share, it's, it's tough to share a server. What if I yeah. just want to share a piece of my server with yeah. you, but I'm doing lots of stuff all the time, um, and um, you you get frustrated because yeah you let me use it as a server but you never get any time yeah. because I'm always running these really big jobs okay. yeah yeah so what we've done in 2018 is we've we've looked at that and we've come up with a new way to build queues and we call it server capacity management 
or we do for this webinar anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but okay, so let's look at that. So if we go to engines and licensing, yeah, yeah, one of the things under there is configure, and what we've done, scroll to the bottom, we've introduced this notion of queues. And in this server, we've added a number of queues. We've added the queues for the sales department. We've added a queue for short interactive jobs. We've yep. added a queue for those jobs that should be run in office hours, those jobs that are for marketing. We've also added dedicated queues for long jobs. So yep. if there's jobs that take a long time, yeah. we want to just say, hey, you can only run on, on certain engines. So first yep. thing we do is we create these queues. You'll also note that we move the priority of from jobs to queues. And that way we can specify what queue gets, um, you know, is treated as more important. Yeah, because I and guess so, yeah. your long jobs is well, a priority I gave of them the bottom. Yeah, because you, if you had those quick jobs coming in, like maybe if you've got data streaming stuff, you want yeah. those to go in That's right, first, that's right. You don't want a long, a long job. job. Yeah, yeah, you don't want a long job to jump in. So, yeah. Okay, so now let's look at the engines here. Okay. So that's at the top. And, um, and you can see how we assign the queue. So the marketing and sales team each get one engine dedicated to themselves. Yeah. They also are thrown on, on other engines. So if those engines are idle, you know, the jobs can go there. And the long jobs, you can see we put the long jobs on engines that are the same as jobs that are after hours. Yeah. And the nice thing is with these queues is using the REST API, you can assign engines to queues. So you could have a schedule that runs that um, at 5 p.m. that all of a sudden gives um, long jobs and after hours engines. But yeah. during the day, you might yeah. say, you know what, I'm not going to give them engines or I'm going to give them just one engine or whatever you want to do. So yeah. that's kind of the I idea there so yeah so so the important thing to remember is queues have priorities um jen's logged in as the um administrator right yeah. now yeah so she can see this if you go to repositories as well um we'll look at the repositories view where oh yeah yep and the administrator has the ability to change queues on repositories but if jen logs in as just jen yeah do you want me to do that? Yeah, or? let's do that, show people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she logs in just as an author, so not as an administrator. And then in that view, she's going to see. Yeah. She has I no idea that. of queues. She can't see engine allocations or anything like that. Um, and so she doesn't really um, have any control over, hey, I just run a job from this particular. Um, repository it's just going to go to that that yeah. engine yeah. yeah okay so yeah. so that's kind of the way where we're going now in the past what happened is we only basically people just played with one thing called priority and so we deprecated that it still will work yeah but we really want people to start thinking about how to partition how to plan their their server capacity of using these queues and um, and we're going to continue to work on that to make it even yeah. more and more powerful. So yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And it's also in your face more, which is um, pretty exciting. Whereas yeah. before it was yeah. these queue priorities were kind of, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. I should go back to admin. Yeah, because we're going to show what one thing we've added is, um, and we might flip to the slide here just to really mess you up. Oh, okay. Let yeah. me log in first. Yeah. 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 Right. And which slide would you like? Let's go to slide label number eight, which is who knows what number it is. Yeah. Look that at one. that. Yeah. Deployment visualization. So this is really useful um, when you have a distributed deployment or a fault tolerant deployment. You can now see graphically everything that is how your server components are allocated across a network across machines so this one here is a fault tolerant deployment that um that we're all we all run it safe um in fact we run this in safe on docker so in Docker, we're using docker we're able to replicate and test our fault tolerant deployment on a single machine which is really nice yeah because then we can just destroy a container and the server should self-heal or you know and continue to run so yeah. that's kind of um, what we're doing there. So now let's yeah. go back to the, the server. Yeah. Okay. And let's look at it here. Now this one isn't as exciting because it's our FME cloud instance. It's running on one node. Yeah. So if you're running on only one machine, 
um, you're kind of not very fault tolerant because if that machine goes down. But yeah. still, there's interesting things. You can see we have 10 engines across the bottom. Yep. And you can see if an engine's running a job, we actually have the job number that a particular engine is running on. So if yep. you click on that, now Jen could actually click on the green there under status and, um, and see that job. And then, you know, because maybe you're going to go, holy smokes, that job's been on that engine for a long time. Yeah. What's actually going on? It's actually going on there, yeah. so that's um, really, really useful. So, yep. yeah, so you can go back there, and if she refreshes, maybe we'll be lucky and another job's running, but maybe not. So, that was a long job, yeah, that is a long job. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so good. So, that's um, so yeah, so that's really, really, um, really exciting and interesting. And that's just um, that's going to continue to evolve. You know, we want more and more to be able to graphically convey to our administrators what's going on in their server where it is um, it's also a nice really quick way to see you know what's going on with your engines you know yeah. if, if an engine disappeared for some reason you would be able to see that and any of the nodes if like if joan clicks jen sorry if jen clicks <laughs> joan i'll call you joan if jen <laughs> clicks on engine manager yeah then um there's lots of information in in all of these now so uh, yeah you know because we debated at safe um how much do we put in the box how much don't we do and then uh the server team hugh and rob came up with this idea of this node information because now we can really load it up with information and links and so yeah so that's really exciting yeah and if i had server i'd want to buy more engines just so i could see more <laughs> engines right yeah so, just to make it look more exciting yeah exactly exactly yeah. so that's um so that's visualization. So that's um, deployment visualization. Yeah. yeah. So let's look at you've built just the most amazing automation today. Have that I? schedule. Yeah. And and I would like it. So oh, okay. You, yeah. Yeah. So can you um? You want me to send that to you? Yeah. Yeah. Can you build me a project? I can. Okay. Yeah. And there's been a few. So a project is. What's that that was from me yesterday. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. You're admin still, aren't you? Yeah. 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 So. So, yeah. So let's build me a project um, with your, your. Um, so I guess we want three things. First, we want the workspace. Yep. 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 Uh, okay. Yeah. And projects are a way of packaging up an entire. Um, set of FME server components that together form a solution. So Jen's yeah. going to give me the workspace. Oh, just give me the whole repository. You, okay, yeah. Yeah, because I'm kind of greedy. Ooh, so shoot. No. There we go. Repository. Here we go. So that was in the webinar folder. Webinar one. Yep. Like that. Then Good. what else would you like? I would like the schedule. Mm -hmm. There you go. And I want that data. That. Okay. Yeah because then I know I have everything to recreate. It's just give me the resource folder. Yeah. There you go. Data deep dive. Perfect. Happy with that? Yeah, I think that's great. And yeah. And so now you've saved that, have you? I will in a moment. Yeah. Okay. So that's so got those three things in. Yep. Yeah. That looks great. Okay. There you go. So now you're going to need to export that to give it to me. Yep. Yeah. And now what we've added in FME 2018 is this exclude sensitive information. Yeah. Um, and so if this workspace hit a database or hit a web service, um, anything that had, um, you know, credential in, yep. credentials in it, by um, selecting that exclude sensitive information, we remove the sensitive information. So if you were using a connection to a database, the database connection would still be there but the user and password would be blanked out. Yeah. Yeah. Because that way I can share this, you know, when I share stuff with you, I might just, I might say, I don't, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. But for if I was sending it outside the building or maybe to, you know, somebody in another department, yeah. like they just, I didn't really want to give them access to my uh, Gmail folder for example, yeah. then I would, um, I would click that and uh, download it and send it to them. And, um, and this is also, we're working towards being able to share these projects on, on FME Hub, um, and that way, users, uh, um, FME users in, in, in our community can build FME server solutions, um, publish them, share them on FME Hub, yeah. knowing that um, there's you know security yeah. information credentials have yeah. been stripped out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of yeah. So that's great. Yeah. 
Yep, and where are we now? Let's see here. Nine. So what's next, Jen? I think we're talking about security. Yes, we're talking about security. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're going to talk about, um, right, many organizations, they, um, they, uh, security is of paramount um, interest. And so what we've added in FME Server is this ability for you to change the encryption key. FME Server um, is encrypted. So, um, so in FME 2018, so if somebody um, um, got access to your server, they wouldn't be able to get access to the passwords and things like that. Yeah. But um, when we do a backup, by default, we've made that backup so you can go to any, you know, make a backup, Go to another FME server which you create, yep. and now just simply restore it. Yeah. Right. And so you obviously like any like you back up your database like anything you want to really guard your backups. Yeah. But what we've added now in FME Server 2018 is this idea that you can generate a new encryption key. So by default it's in secure mode. If Jen now um, selects it, we have this thing called restrictive mode. Yeah. Yeah. And now. Um, when Jen says generate key, or okay, it is doing that. Yeah, so so what's gonna happen now is it's generating a new random key, and the database is, um, and the entire server is gonna be re-encrypted with this key. Yeah. So now if Jen did a backup and tried to move it to a new server, she would not be able to restore it. Yeah, unless I had that key. Unless you had that key. So yeah. what she would have to do is first apply that key to the database you wanted to do the restore, yeah, and then do the restore. Yeah, and um, and um, so what happens, Jen, if in the middle of changing the um, the the key, the the power goes out or something bad happens, and you're only part way through? Are you like in really bad shape here? If I've got the old key before yeah. I try to do the new one, yeah. I'm good. Okay, I can use that one. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we were very careful to make sure that the new key was valid only at the point where the migration. Was success or the um the new key change was successful? Yeah, yeah. And at that point, we invalidate the the old key. Yeah. Now, what happens if um hey I'm an FME server user? I generate a key. I um I back up my server. I destroy my server, and yeah. then I go to a new server, but I forget my key. Can they call us and we'll help them? Well, they can call us. Yeah. But we can't help them. Yeah. Yeah. It so. truly is. Yeah. It truly. If if we could help you, then. It really wouldn't be that good of security. No. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're like dot pem files or or any other type of encryption key. You got to guard those keys and make sure you store those keys somewhere, um, really, really safe. Yeah. 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 So, and for organizations that are you know you doing key key rotation, um, you can use this to do that. Um, you know we're not done here in the pa in the future. We want to start. We want to connect to um, key services. Where we can store the key and get a new key and things like that, but yep. for now, yeah. So that's um, so that's so that's uh, that's it. So on that one. So now we, we should talk a little bit about um, fault tolerance. Yeah. 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 So let's go back to um. Do we have a picture of that? Oh, we have that. We can look. Go back to that slide. Oh, okay. Yeah. We can go back to that slide. That yeah. perfect. Yeah. So what we've done in FME 2018 is we've re we've done a fair amount of re-architecting to make sure that um, FME server is fault tolerant. So now there is no fault tolerant mode and not fault tolerant mode. FME server is just made to be fault tolerant. If you decide to bring up two FME server cores, then hey, if one goes down, you're not your server's still gonna um, yep. still gonna run. Yeah. Um, you'll notice there's also a number of job routers. If um, there's an active and a standby, you can have others if you want. If, if the active one goes down, then a, 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 a um, standby one will just pick up. Yep. You also don't have to um, you don't have to worry about jobs being submitted twice, all the um, or anything like that. Yeah. Schedules just work. Um, you know, again, you don't have we have a distributed scheduler. All our um, notification framework is distributed. So if a yep. file's dropped in a a Dropbox, you don't have to worry about it run twice. Yeah. Um, it's been built to work with, um, we've tested with a number of uh, proxies, so HA proxy, NGINX, um, we, there are some, so any um, 
load balancer should work. Yeah. 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 Jen, Jen likes that expression. Should work. <laughs> should work. Yeah. Yeah. You're not on it'll, the it'll just, team. Work. it'll just work. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. So for 2018.0, the um, the fault tolerance is um, tech, tech preview. preview. Yeah. And for dot one, which is in a couple months after the dot zero, yeah. we will take that off. So yeah. And um, and we're testing it in here. Um, yeah, and, um, but express and distributed installs, not tech preview. Like, yeah, don't get scared off. That's right. That's right. That's right. And we yeah. want people to be testing it. So if you want a fault tolerant deployment, let us know because it'd be really good for us to know how you're finding it, and we yeah. can help you with that. Yeah. yeah. And if you've got feedback, it would be good to tell us before dot one comes out. Yeah. Basically. That's right. And, yeah. and and in the past we had like active, 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 passive. Yeah. So if you want to talk about that with us, we're happy to talk about okay, how do I deploy FME server and a fault tolerant across three machines, five machines? What's my best strategy for yeah. ramping up scale and things like that? Yeah. Um, we're we're happy to talk about that. If you're in a full disaster recovery mode, so you have two parallel servers where yeah. one is only the only one you use, and then in the event of a disaster, you switch over to another one. That yeah. story is still going to be the same. the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this is um, all about um, fault tolerance and being able to scale and add really, really easily. So, yeah. Yep. So, so that's that one. And then, last but not least, we have um, we have Docker. Yeah, your so, favorite. <laughs> yeah. So containers. So FME Server 2018 is um, out of tech preview for we want to run in Docker. It's safe, yeah. we, I think we almost run it exclusively in Docker. That's not entirely true because we still <laughs> test, of course. Yeah. Um, but if you're running on Linux, um, for sure Docker is, um, you know, there's lots of benefits to that. One is yeah. security um, because of course, if um, F3 server engines um, outside of Docker, the engine ultimately had, could, could have access, if you don't set up, yeah. could have access to anywhere on that machine. Yeah. And so obviously, you know, who knows what it could read or what could happen. Yeah. But um, with Docker, the engine is within a container. So there's no way that engine can get outside of that container. Yeah. We have very um, specific um, communication paths. Um, in that container, and so uh, yeah, you, we could trash the container, but then the container would just restart. Yeah, yeah, and that's in fact how we're testing. A lot of our testing is done with FME Server. Yeah, uh, using Docker. Um, if we look in the future, the future of containers that safe is um, going to be Kubernetes. So we're um, excited about that. So yeah. you're going to hear more and more about Kubernetes. Um, with um, containers and Kubernetes running in various cloud stacks, using Kubernetes on-prem in the cloud, Kubernetes hybrid, Kubernetes. So yep. yeah, so lots. Of, I could go on lots and on. Lots of there. Kubernetes, what else? yeah. Lots of Kubernetes. It yeah. could be another hour webinar. Yeah, yeah, so. it could be. Maybe will be one mm, day. Yeah. So maybe Jen won't. <laughs> Not be with there. me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be in that one. Okay. So yeah. So um, you know, trying to go over FME server in an hour is a, a tall task, but um, yep. there you have it. That's a whirlwind tour of FME Server 2018. Um, a really, you know, a huge release. Yeah. Um, lots of, um, under the, lots of the plumbing's been changed, as you can see some of it um, through that, uh, you know, deployment visualization. And, yep. um, and um, we're really looking forward to continuing to build on this, so. Yeah. 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 So. I think with that. Yeah, so I guess if people wanted to talk to us in person, yeah. where would be a good place to do that? The world tour is great. And yeah. we're going to like 74 cities, I'm going to say. More than 70. I don't know, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot. yeah. So, so it doesn't matter where, um, where you are. We're probably coming to a city near you. So, so click on the link and, um, and we'd be happy to see you and talk to you. And we're going to be yeah. going over lots of... Uh, different things it's a it's a good day for sure so yeah looking forward to that yeah then I guess if anybody's got any questions for us it looks like a lot have come through the yeah. webinar as it is I think my all of the server experts are on Q&A this morning so hopefully mm -hmm. good answers coming out to people so let's have a quick um, look at those yeah yeah questions and all of them are probably answered but we'll Highlight a few. Okay. 
Okay. So I've got a question here. Sure. So can Git individual authors create their own version on FME servers, local Git? They can create, yeah. Authors can, can create their own versions, yes. But, but oh, I see what, yeah. Authors can create new versions, but not their own versions. So if you know what I mean, like the whole server is on one Git repository. Right. And so as you as a user, when you you make a commit, you, the only way would you would know it was you, well, it is tagged, but you would say, um, you'd probably put in your comment. So right okay, now yeah. we don't have the ability for each user to have their own Git repository on server. Yeah, okay. At this time, yeah. Yeah, um, and what about job history? Like, you're gonna be able to search through the job history? So we've started. yeah we've, we've started that we started that so the job history yeah the job history is um, we 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 looked at all the things and we tried to identify the things to do that satisfied like eighty percent and so then we so, so now you know take a look and let us know what you want us to do next because um, the the big things people want to do is how do I find a uh, how do I find workspaces that failed workspaces that succeeded by user. And um, and so we've done that. Um, so people want to be able to look at their own. Do they want to be able to search job logs, or do they want to just be able to search the summary information on jobs? Or so that would be useful to them. Yeah. So I guess one of the like anyone that's got ideas or suggestions for for me, server or like they like the way things are going, but maybe they want a little bit more. Right. The place to put those ideas is on our ideas exchange. Yeah. So yeah. on the knowledge center, you can, at the top, they've got this ideas tab. So you can just navigate here. You can see what other people have suggested. If you really like it, mm -hmm. vote it up because the mm -hmm. more votes things get, like the, the more we know that people really want to see this in the product. Yeah. And then you can keep an eye on it, share. What a lot of people don't do that would be great is they might vote, but telling us, how they want to see it implemented or like how it would yeah. work for them yeah. is so useful. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. let us know. Yeah. And somebody's asked, can I run a workspace from within the workspace viewer? And the answer is yes. There's a there's yeah. a run button there. So yeah, yeah you can do that. Um yeah. do you have any comments on performance in server 2018 compared to 17? It's faster. Yeah. So so the engine, you know, a lot of that great work goes to the work the engine and desktop team did. Yeah. But also on the server itself, we've we paid attention to and tried to make things faster and lighter um, on server 2018 than, than 17. And memory on FME server 2017, or sorry, 2018 is less as well. And there's two reasons for that. One, the engine is better with memory, but two, the server components now, in some cases, we don't start them until we need them, and they're only running when we need them. And so, for example, on FME Cloud, um, the old server would take three gig, just starting a server up, and its baseline was three gig of RAM. Oh. Now our baseline is two gig of RAM. So okay. that's quite, that's pretty significant. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. The, okay, anything else? Um, there might be a question for you on ArcGIS. And Docker. Okay. Yep. There... I don't have the question yet, but okay, okay. <laughs> unless okay. you can see it. So no, I don't see it yet. But um, yeah, oh. please update the doc public Docker reposit repository. Thanks. We will do that so that yeah. everybody has the latest and greatest. Okay. So yeah, that question was: Is ArcGIS and Docker supported on Ubuntu? But I guess if Arc I, doesn't yeah, run, ArcGIS, you'd have to. I mean, I yeah, that's a. Oh, is, is our connector to ArcGIS supported on Ubuntu? Um, the answer is no. So yeah, yeah. So okay. So let's go back to um, back to Docker. There's also Docker for Windows that Microsoft is working very, very um, diligently on to enable Windows um, to run within a Docker container. Yeah. So of course that would only be on a Windows server, but um, and we're watching that. We've played with that. At this point, we have not deployed our FME engine inside Docker on a win inside a Docker container. Yeah. Um, but the plan is, and and you'll notice that we didn't highlight it, but you'll notice when you went to that engine configure page, you would see things like build number on the engine and platform, 
And where we would like to get to is particularly in um, container land is the ability to have different um, different operating systems for different yeah. engines. And we have that running internally. Waysong has been doing things like that. And we do have some organizations that on premise have will have a Windows engine connected to the server, particularly to talk yeah. to, you know, things like um, like like Arc ArcGIS. Yeah. 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 Now if you're working with um you know ArcGIS online and things like that, that yeah. of course works yeah. with um, within Ubuntu. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there a way to set up automatic push to remote for source control? At this point, the answer is no. That was something that was um, just didn't quite make it at the end. But the idea would be um, we would schedule it to every night, or you know, hmm. enable you to set a schedule to uh, to to do that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we'll look at, um, yeah, the scheduler GUI is is set to have major work um, after FME 2018.0. So what we did this time is we did we did, had time to do a little bit of, a little few things. Okay. But uh, thanks for that, uh, ESCO. We will um, we will make sure that um, we, we, we make sure we got all your ideas there. Yeah, yeah. So, and then there's... Safe and enhance the scheduler GUI is suggested it'd be easier for us to find the free slot. Yeah, so there's also on the on the scheduler, folks would like the ability to be able to see when the schedules are busy. Like when are you know, are there free slots yeah. when jobs aren't being being put? Yeah. And so one of the things we have um, in here sort of as a skunkworks project was this ability to export um, to an iCal file format. Yeah. And then you could look at that in your calendar and see, you know, um, when, hey, this, there seems not to be much being submitted at this time. So I'll go for that. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, there's actually a Knowledge Center article on that. So Rylan actually wrote up what okay. he did and published it. So, yeah. yeah, you should be able to find it on the Knowledge Center. Okay. And then we'll have to make that. What we should do is put, we'll, we'll make sure for a future release that we have a button to export to iCal, right? Right in yeah. the schedule. Or even in the web, it would be nice. Yeah. If you can do that. Yeah, we could. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks like lots of people would like to have things automatically pushed. That's an easy one for us because we just just didn't get it done. That's it. So yeah. So yeah, looks good. I can't see. Any others jump out from you or the team? I don't think so. I, yeah, I think we've answered most of the ones that they highlighted. So okay, great. Yeah, and look at that. We're about a minute early. Brilliant. I know that's good. Time so, for me to get on live chat, ready to yeah to help speak people. To people. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. So that's that's a good point. So when you um, you know, after you go away, please try um, F3 server download. It would be happy to give you a license to to play around with it for you know, 90 days or however long you need it for to, for you to evaluate or just give it a tr kick the tires. Yeah. Um, and let us know what you like, what you don't like, what is some of the major pain points that you would like us to address. If there's any, um, you know, new automations you'd like us to build, let us know there. Yeah. Um, we have lots of exciting stuff coming that didn't quite make the cut, but um, I won't say more than that. <laughs> but if you like the workspace viewer, you will love what's, other coming things next. that are coming, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's not the workspace viewer which has a clear um, path for the future, being able to, you know, make some edits yeah. and things like that. So, but um, yeah, and please do in, um, come to the world tour. Yeah. Um, and uh, share with us um, what what you'd like to see because it's safe. This really is a partnership with uh, all of our users. Um, you know, we we have that ideas exchange. And um, if you look on the ideas exchange, you'll see now we got to we got to hide those, but or or put them in a different tab. But you'll see all the things we've actually implemented, which is um, yeah, you know, which is the vast majority. There's so many that you've implemented that um, yeah, so you can see the that, that 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 almost now you have to go to second other pages to find ones that we haven't done. So yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna fix that. But please do continue to uh, give us ideas. Um, we know we're not done on the job history. Um, so let us know what we can do there too. So, yeah. So thanks, Jen. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That and was fun. Happy FME. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>